वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज़ द अदर मॉड्यूल ऑफ ई पी जी पाठशाला एंड इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट अलीलोपैथी अलीलोपैथी इज़ अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ टू वर्ड्स अलीलोन विच मीन्स ऑफ ईच अदर एंड पैथोस विच मीन्स टू सफ़र सिंपली अलीलोपैथी इज़ द केमिकल इनिबिशन ऑफ वन प्लांट स्पीशीज बाई अनदर प्लांट स्पीशीज The inhibitory chemicals are released into the environment and they affect the development as well as growth of nearby plants. As per International Allelopathy Society, allelopathy is a process that involves the release of secondary metabolites that are produced by plants, algae, bacteria and fungi. These substances they influence the growth and development of agricultural and biological systems the allelopathic substance was first detected in black walnut tree by davis in 1928 allelopathic chemicals they can be present in the leaves flowers fruits roots or stems and may be released from these parts of the plant allelo chemicals they are introduced into the environment by a root exudation foliar leaching volatilization and residual decomposition they can also be found in the surrounding soil target species are affected by these toxins in different different ways the toxic chemicals they may reduce the plant growth by inhibiting the shoot or root growth by blocking the nutrient uptake or by disturbing the naturally occurring symbiotic relationship thereby destroying the plant's usable source of nutrient allelo chemicals they may be involved in plant 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 herbivore or plant insect communication by these chemicals coming to the historical background of the allelopathy the term allelopathy was first coined by hans mollish in 1937 the term is a relatively recent one but the concept of allelopathy is too old for over 2000 years phenomena of allelopathy has been reported in the literature as plant interference initial observations of weed and crop allelopathy they were made by theophrastus in 300 bc and by pliny ii in 1st ad further in 1600s many botanists they reported the irregular growth of some plants in the presence of others but no one found any experimental proof in the 17th and 18th centuries botanists they relied strongly on a comparative approach and conducted some experiments on the plant growth and its relation to nutrition number of botanists farmers agronomists and gardeners conducted a series of experiments to describe allelopathic interactions among the plants however intense interest in the field of allelopathy was revived only in 20th century work of strainer and reed in 1907 and 1908 and their co-workers they revived the interest of many scientists in this field now coming to their classification part classification based on the fate of chemicals in the soil first is true type the release of toxic compounds into the environment in their original form in which they are produced second one is functional type the release of a toxic chemical substance into the environment in modified form now the question comes that how this modification occurs the modification occurs due to the transformation by microorganisms coming to the next classification that is based on the target or the recipient now simple allelopathy or teletoxicity when target plants are other than the donor plants first is weed on crops now when weeds like quackgrass wild oat vermuda grass 
etc they cause serious decrease in the yield of important edible as well as cash crops now the decrease in the yield is mainly due to the release of root exudates residue remains and some toxic allelopathic compounds second is weed on weed when one weed inhibits the emergence of another weed that is known as weed on weed interference for example logon grass it interferes with the growth of button grass by releasing some inhibitory substances third is crop on weed interference some crops they release the allelopathic chemicals which inhibit the growth of weeds for example oats p the suppress the growth of lamb squatter now the allelopathic effects of weed and crops on another weed they may be applied for the development of natural herbicides that is the phenomena of biopesticide comes into action here coming to the next point that is auto allelopathy or auto toxicity now when the target plants they are similar to the donor plants that phenomena is known as auto allelopathy let us take an example that is the seed germination of horse nettle horse nettle the scientific name is solanum carolensis it was inhibited by the presence of the other material that was extracted from the roots stems and leaves of the same plant and was incorporated into the soil now coming to the different different types of allelopathic chemicals first type of allelopathic chemicals are phenolic acids these are the most common plants and they consists of a hydroxyl group that is oh group that is bonded directly to an aromatic hydrocarbon group the phenolic compounds that exhibit the property of allelopathy they are derived from coumarins cinnamic and benzoic acids the metabolic pathways that are responsible for the production of phenolic compounds in plants are shikimic acid and acetic acid pathways they are included in the category of secondary metabolites that are concerned in plant allelopathy the presence of phenolic allelochemicals has been observed both in natural as well as in man made ecosystems they cause various ecological and economic problems like replanting problems in orchards reduction in crop yield and regeneration failure of natural forests they exhibit diverse modes of action and they may be explored as lead compound compounds or components for the development of herbicides or pesticides the major function of phenolic compounds in plants is to provide scent and color to flower for attracting the pollinators or to keep away herbivores or pathogens the phenolic compounds like chlorogenic acid proto catechic acid that is 3,4 dihydroxy benzoic acid gallic acid 3,4 dihydroxy benzaldehyde para hydroxy benzoic acid caffeic acid and 3,5 dinitrobenzoic acid isolated from different plants they have shown inhibitory effects on other plant species especially on weeds coming to the second class that is organic acids these are the compounds that possess acidic properties the common examples of organic acids are carboxylic acid tartaric acid and citric acid these acids are reported for their allelopathic nature citric malic oxalic and tartaric acids they have been extracted from the leaf aqueous extract they were reported for the allelopathic activity against the lettuce seedling growth next class is of flavonoids flavonoids are categorized as secondary metabolites they are biologically active low molecular weight compounds and have more than 10000 structural variants of flavonoids and have been reported till now they possess various physical and biochemical properties and therefore they show interaction with different targets in subcellular locations 
This interaction elicits several activities in microbes, plants and animals. They are known to play crucial roles in the development of roots and shoots, transport of growth hormones like auxins and pollination. They are known to possess anti-cancer, antiviral, antibacterial and antifungal activities. In plants, the transport of flavonoids occur within and between the plant tissues and cells. Thereafter, they are released into the rhizosphere. In this rhizospheric region, they are involved in allelopathy or plant-plant interactions. However, the role of flavonoids is less characterized as compared to other secondary metabolites. The major flavonoids are campiferol, quercetin, macaine, comestrol, luteolin, etc. Now methyl transferases and glycotransferases enzymes, they are responsible for the methylation and glycosylation of flavonoids. These modifications are responsible for the alteration of their reactivity, solubility and stability. In nature, flavonoids are present in the form of glycosides. Next class is alkaloids. These compounds, they are mainly involved in defense mechanism of plants against insects, microorganisms and mammals. However, few of them have also been recognized as allelopathic compounds. For example, paraxanthin, theobromine, mimosin, nephrolotin, caffeine. They have been employed in pharmacy, food preparation and as poisons. Recent investigations, they suggest that plant produced alkaloids, they contribute to interfere with other plants and that primary allelopathic activity that may disrupt a biochemical pathway in plants which is analogous to one more usually associated with animals. Coming to the next class is terpenes. Greater part of essential oils is constituted by terpenes. Terpenes are categorized as monoterpenes with 10 carbon atoms and sesquiterpenes with 15 carbon atoms respectively. Essential oils, they can be extracted from leaves, roots, wood, bark, stem, flowers and fruits etc. Examples are cineols, alpha and beta pinin, camphin, dipantin, eucalyptol, thyme, terpineol, parasimine, serine, carbon, zirenol, limonin, etc. They inhibit the seed germination in plants and they may also cause morphological and physiological changes in plant seedlings. Next class is of amino acids. Certain amino acids like lysine, methionine and tryptophan produced by plants, they inhibit plant growth by inhibition of metabolic pathways inside the plants. Apart from their action against weeds, the amino acids, they have also been reported for their inhibitory effects against some fungi. Now, the release of allelochemicals in nature. Allelopathy is all about the production and the release of allelochemicals in nature. The release pathway varies for different species. First is exudation of volatile compounds and their deposition on the surface of leaves by rainfall. Exudation of volatile compounds from green parts of the plant. Dead decaying organic matter of plant residues that is litter fall or dead roots and root exudation. Now coming to the root exudation property. Root exudates are the chemicals that are secreted by roots into the surrounding environment of soil that is rhizosphere. Root exudates are the major repository of allelochemical input in the soil. Through the exudation, roots not only regulate microbial community but also change the chemical as well as the physical properties of the soil for the regulation of the growth of neighboring plant species. Next is volatilization. Essential oils escape out through the aerial parts of the plant. There are two ways of recipient plant exposure to the essential oils. First, the recipient plant may be exposed to these oils directly through respiration or by a direct contact. Secondly, 
the essential oils get absorbed on soil particles and further plants absorb them from the soil solution. These are complex mixtures of hydrocarbons and their oxygenated compounds and thus they impart characteristic odor or taste to the essential oils. Volatile oils after their release they exhibit high phytotoxicity towards a number of plants. Next is the release of allelochemicals by a leachation. It is the movement of large quantities of plant metabolites from aerial parts of the plants by the action of rain, dew, mist or fog in the form of aqueous solutes. Now, leachation is an important mechanism of liberation of allelochemicals. It is an effective way of releasing the toxins by plants and thus avoiding autotoxicity and allelopathy to occur simultaneously. The materials that can be leached out include a diverse array of compounds which may be organic or inorganic. Among these are amino acids, sugars, vitamins, phytohormones and allelochemicals such as phenolic acids, organic acids, alkaloids, terpenoids, etc. The leachation of inorganic nutrients, sugar and phytohormones are beneficial for plant growth. External factors including temperature, light, rain period and intensity they may also influence the process of leachation. Next is the residual decomposition. The old leaves, barks and branches of plants that have been turned into the litter or residue, they are also responsible for the release of allelopathic compounds. The leaves and other plant parts, they fall onto the ground and are decomposed by weathering or by soil microorganisms that release allelochemicals into the environment. The decomposing residues, they provide the largest quantity of allelochemicals into the rhizosphere and it can induce the growth inhibition of plant seedlings. Commonly in agriculture, the plant residues are incorporated into the soil to improve soil fertility. However, the growth and productivity may also be reduced by this incorporation. Now, what is the fate of allelochemicals in the soil? As soon as allelochemicals, they are released into the soil, they enter a complex plant soil system. Now what happens in this system? Various factors, they affect their availability as well as their effectiveness on target plants. Some processes, they are responsible for the addition of all allelochemicals to the system, whereas some processes like microbial breakdown, plant uptake and leaching, they are responsible for the reduction of soil. Soil microbes take up the allelopathic compounds released from the plants and are responsible for their degradation by secreting extracellular and intercellular microbial enzymes. Microbial transformations may lead to the production of more phytotoxic allelochemicals. Coming to the next part that is the allelopathy in cropping system. The phenomena of allelopathy in crops has both positive as well as negative implication for cropping system. Negative effects of allelopathy include changes in the distribution pattern of crops, reduction in yield and difficulty in replantation of crops. When a particular species releases allelochemicals that can cause damage to other plant species, this phenomena is termed as heterotoxicity. However, when a plant releases such type of allelochemicals that inhibit its own germination and development, this phenomena is known as autotoxicity. Now, the probable reason of autotoxicity is natural selection where older plants avoid competition for light, water, nutrient, etc. with the younger ones by maintaining them at certain distance. Now, what are the different techniques for allelopathy study? First is allelopathic study can be carried out under in vitro condition using petri dishes. 
Bioassay studies involve the evaluation of plant extracts, essential oils and isolated chemical compounds on the germination and initial seedling growth of a target plant. The plant extract can be made from any plant part including flower, stem, roots, fruit and seeds. Now the steps required to carry out the bioassay. First, bottom of the petri dish is lined with filter paper. Then the filter paper is moistened with distilled water. Seeds are then lined on the filter paper. The petri dishes are kept in the growth chamber having a programmed photo period. Thereafter, on the seventh day of the germination, germination percentage and seedling length, they are evaluated. Next is competition. Competition effects, they have been categorized into four types. That is additive, substitutive, neighborhood and systematic. Among these additive types, they can be used to identify allelopathic species. This type of identification involves a change in the density of one species while the density of other species remains constant. Now once it gets confirmed that a particular species is showing allelopathic behavior and then other types of competition experiments can be performed so as to select those cultivars that are having higher allelopathic potential. Now, the residual toxicity of allelochemicals in the soil. Soil samples are collected from the rhizospheric region where allelopathic species are present. These samples, they are used as substrate for the germination of the target species. Similarly, soil samples from nearby areas where allelopathic species are not present is used as control. Detoxification of the substrate. Activated carbon has a peculiar property that when it is mixed into the soil, it can adsorb various organic compounds. This property can be used to evaluate the allelopathic activity. On the basis of this property, it has been assumed that allelopathic potential of a particular species can be diminished or it can be eliminated by the presence of activated carbon. Activated carbon can be mixed with plant extracts incorporated into the soil or hydroponic solution or it can be placed directly on the soil surface. To assess the allelopathic potential, a comparison is made between the treatments and control. Coming to the hydroponic experiments. Investigation of allelopathy by hydroponics is an interesting tool. A hydroponic apparatus provides a medium for the diffusion and delivery of allelochemicals to target plants. Amendment of plant residues. In this method, plant materials they are added in different amounts to the substrate to assess the allelopathic effect and the release of allelochemicals on the target species. This technique has been successfully used in greenhouse and field experiments. Next method is plant box method. This method is entirely based on the principle of dose response. This method establishes a direct link between growth inhibition and concentration of root exudates in the media. Agar is used as diffusion medium in this method since agar allows the dispersion of allelochemicals from roots of the donor to the target plant. Now coming to the procedure of the plant box method, firstly the donor plant is placed inside the cellulose tube. Then the tube is kept in the corner of a plant box. It is kept in the ice box and filled with cooled agar. After the gelatinization of the agar, seeds of target plant, they are placed concentrically near the donor plant. Then the container is sealed to avoid evaporation. The boxes are placed in pot so that roots of target seedlings, they get darkened. Then they are kept in a biological oxygen demand chamber and the control consists of a plant box without the donor plant. Coming to the mode of action of allelopathic chemicals. 
the morphological changes and restriction in the development of roots and shoots may arise due to the changes in the hormonal level. The concentration of plant hormone that is indole acetic acid and zeatine riboside which are responsible for plant growth that is roots and shoots gets decreased on treatment with allelopathic chemicals like essential oils and phenols. The germination inhibition may be the consequence of blockage in the water uptake or disruption of the metabolic enzymes that are involved in glycolysis and oxidative pentose phosphate pathway. Now it should be remembered that both glycolysis and oxidative pentose phosphate pathways they are responsible for ATP production. Moreover, disruption of mitochondrial respiration system may be another mechanism for the inhibition of seed germination and radical elongation due to the interference of volatile essential oils. As a result, ATP production gets decreased. Allelopathic compounds, they are also known to inhibit the root growth by interfering with cell, cell proliferation in the apical meristem cells of the roots and thereby restricting the mitotic activity of the cell. Now, what the allelopathic compounds do? They cause generation of reactive oxygen species like singlet oxygen, superoxide ions, hydroxyl as well as hydroperoxyl radicals. These reactive oxygen species they lead to the disruption of membrane permeability which can cause damage to DNA, proteins, lipids and enhance the accumulation of lipid peroxide molecules. Now, the accumulation of lipid peroxide molecules is detected by a MDA content that is melon DLDHYDE content method. So, students in this module we discussed the different different aspects of allelopathy. We learnt what is allelopathy, what are the different terms associated with allelopathy like autotoxicity, heterotoxicity and what is the mode of action of the allelopathy chemicals. Thank you.